Patrick, you were part of a top 15 defense last year. Um, how excited are you to come back? You guys are only losing one, a couple starters, and then you also get Rashad and Keyshawn back this year from injury. I mean, I'm definitely excited just to see what we all could do as a whole group. It should be interesting because, like you said, we was missing two key important factors last year, but we still got the job done. So it's just exciting to see how much how much better we could top off than what we did last year. Patrick, I'll ask you what I asked Kenny and uh, Jimmy as well. I mean, did you at any point in the last week, few weeks, consider opting out of the season like you know a handful of guys around the country have? No, I didn't. I decided to come back after the season, so that's my decision. That's what I'm going to do. I came back to play football. Is it weird in practice just the, you know, the, Jimmy was talking about and Kenny were talking about like the, the water bottles having to be wiped down and like, you know, they have the little fa you know, the mouth shield and everything. Is, is it just a little bit different or a little weird being, being back in practice right now? I mean, yeah, it, of course it's weird just knowing like there's a global pandemic going on. You just out there practicing. And of course stuff is different because we have to take better precautionary measures. So it's just, it, it, yeah, you could say it's weird a little bit, but it's necessary. Now, Patrick, uh, Coach Page was talking about how you guys are, you know, aren't, aren't going to sneak up on anybody this year. Well, not that not you did it last year, but this year, maybe quarterbacks get rid of the ball a little quicker. Maybe they, you know, watch you a little more, maybe more double teams. What kind of things you, can you do to combat that? Uh, well, sound like I just got to get back there faster and beat the double teams. That's all I could do. Just keep working hard. Patrick, how uh, competitive is the defensive end room right now? Because the shot's back and you had guys like John and Pablo kind of get some playing time. I mean, how competitive mm -hmm. is it right now? Uh, it's extremely competitive. I'll say it was extremely competitive last year. And now it's even more competitive because, like you said, shot's back. So you got a lot of people who are working and shot and he definitely got he definitely been working too and i've been working too so we all just trying to grind and be the best and trying to be that number one and patrick is there concerns about how the snaps are going to get spread around with so many so many bodies or do you just try to think well if i'm only playing 60 percent because we're rotating i'm going to be fresher than if i was playing 100 percent the snaps? Uh, no, I don't have no concerns. I don't think about that. I leave that up to Coach Parchers. I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, he's a great coach, so he knows what he's doing. I let him handle snap counts and all that. That's, I'm just a player. Do you feel like you guys will be able to be even fresher than you were last year because you have four, five, six guys you can roll out there at the end? I do think so for sure, just because we got we got depth. We still got – we got the same DNs we had last year plus Rashad, so that adds a lot more depth. So it allows us to just be able to play harder all the time. I want to add that DeMar Hamlin has just joined us as well. DeMar, thanks for taking some time with us. So both Patrick and DeMar are available here for your questions. Thanks for having me. DeMar, how are you doing today? I'm wonderful. How are you doing? Good, good. I was wondering, uh, Coach Bates showed us the old uh, water pump uh, he brought out to uh, try to get you guys motivated. Mm -hmm. What kind of a motivator is he? And does he do some real weird things at practice to get you guys going? Yeah, uh, Coach Bates has his own way of uh, motivating ma motivating guys to get going, you know. And uh, he just brings the energy that we never really had before, or not even that we never really had before, but he just – he has his own unique way of getting guys going. And whether we like it or not, you know, we love Coach Bates and we want to play for him. So it, that right there just is enough fuel. Is he still doing the push-ups? Every day, all day, and sit-ups. <laughs> For each of you guys, as redshirt seniors coming in, what's your is there any different appreciation or or love for the game, and especially with the talk of who knows if there would have been a season at all? How has that has that changed your guys' perspective about football? Uh, definitely, I would say just just being here on my last year, just seeing the growth of you know myself, and then looking at the younger guys who like a guy, particularly Buddy Mack, who a freshman, he early enrolled in January, and now he's, so this will be like his eighth month in, as a college athlete. And just to see his growth from him coming here, having the slinky, skinny arms, to finally having a little bit of college muscles and going through his first day of camp, you know, just like to see his growth from month, month one to month eight, and then think about myself, as a redshirt senior, I just got a respect for the game and just seeing that right there. 
question for both of you guys as you know senior older guys on the team are, are you guys talking about accountability to these younger guys when it comes to you know uh, staying healthy staying out of uh, you know kind of those situations where they might get COVID or getting the you know what I mean like I guess how, how frequently are you guys talking to those younger guys about that I mean most definitely I talk to them every chance I get it every chance I get I just let them know like I get this college, like you want to have fun, but you got to think about the bigger picture. We're here to play ball. You got people out here trying to have a have a season, have a successful season. So y'all got to put, like y'all got to put your priorities in line and going out and being around people. That's not a priority right now. Our priority is playing ball. And that's all we could just keep saying to them. Uh, yeah, same for me. Uh, something we talked about today was the most responsible team, you know, that's who will ultimately get the most out of this season. And we just have to be responsible as a team. You know, young guys, they can't have the fun of being in college, being a regular student. They got to they gotta be responsible. They can't live the, the normal college life. And just that right there, just being responsible, that's all we got to do. Are you guys going to be um, taking most of your classes or all of your classes online in, in the fall? Or uh, do, you, do you guys foresee being in in-person classes at all? Well, me personally, I'm taking all my classes online. So me as me as well. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to keep it the safest and mm -hmm. smartest way possible. So I'm just going to keep all my classes online and stay away as much as I can. You guys, I'm curious when you when you got here. I mean, you know, the the offense was humming. I think Coach Canada was was last year in 16 scored a lot of points. But it looks like there's been a shift the last three years. Do you guys feel that the identity of this program is more on the de defensive side of the ball? And was that sort of what your group, seniors especially, maybe talked about accomplishing during their time? Uh, that's, that's very interesting that you asked that question. We were actually just talking today about how, about how instead of it being one strength of the program and another strength of the program, how we could combine the strength and be strong as a program together. So that's something that we're trying to do right now just be strong as one unit and not just one side of the ball, just have both sides of the balls be strong. Yeah, we don't. We really don't even want to look at it as a divided, the defense is the face of anything. You know, we're a team and to win, we're trying to win games. That's why we all came back. That's why we all here right now. We're trying to win games and to win games, you need offense, defense, special teams, you need everything. So face of a team, you know, we, we're a team. There, there is no face of this team. Jamar, uh, I saw on social media you, you put a thing, you put a picture of your locker and having like hashtag like opt in. Did you ever considering? Did you ever consider opting out? I know uh, Coach Narduzzi said everyone, everyone's kind of in for this season. Yeah, no, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm bought in. I'm all in 100%. You know, if I wanted to opt out or anything like that, you know, at the time this wasn't even an issue. But if I wanted to do all that, I would have just took my chances and got drafted where I would have got drafted last year, you know, before I got my year back. But once I got that year back, it was it was no looking back. This is what I wanted to do. I wanted to come back. I want to play. And I'm on board with all my brothers. We we here to win games. You feel like everybody's on, on board with that? I mean, is that conversations you guys have had among the team of like, hey, you know, we're all in this together type of thing? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. One thing I will say is every everybody has their own situations, but we all came back kind of with a, the same understanding of that we're coming back for each other and for this team and for this defense, the guys that are on, on that side of the ball. But, you know, we're coming back for each other to, to go out where we know we can go out, and that's on top. Oh. Patrick, you were, you've always been extremely quick off the ball. Um, has there been any talk about the, uh, the lack – of crowd noise or less than crowd noise that some things that you guys are going to be able to pick up on maybe more so than previous years of course with louder crowd noise in packed stadiums uh no we haven't that's very interesting to say that we haven't actually really talked about that we just trying to just just stay safe and just do what we got to do to play ball whether there's a crowd there or not we still got to put up the same performance and let people know who we are Guys, Coach Narduzzi told us earlier that he feels there's a different um, aura around Kenny Pickett. There's a confidence around him. What have you guys noticed about him uh, as one of the leaders on the team? 
Um, one thing I would say is I, I wouldn't say there's a different aura or anything like that. Kenny's always been a confident guy. He's always believed in himself. He's, he, Kenny's that guy who's the same every day. He shows up and he comes to work. Um, I would say maybe coach might see a little bit more confidence in him with just, you know, developing and coach Whipple's offense maybe more. But as far as him as a person, he's a, he's, he's confident every day. You know, we go, we go at it every day. He thinks offense is going to do something to us and, you know, defense, we, we talk our stuff back, but Kenny, he's been a confident guy. He believes in himself and he believes in his team and, you know, we're right behind. Him. How much do you guys enjoy that interaction when you guys are giving it to each other? We love it. That's yeah. that's that's why we come here. You know, that's that's what gets us going. You, you know, someone might be having a bad day, something going on outside of the building or body not feeling right. But, you know, that competition aspect, it just makes you put all those problems aside and just play football. Mara, you talked about making that decision back in December or January, whenever it was. You know, how much did you go back and forth? Uh, you know, I mean, once you got word from the NCAA, was that just it? Or did you get that word and then have to think about it for a little while? I had to think about it for a little while. Uh, I had to weigh my options, you know, look at, talk to some people, uh, really talk to my family, you know, my dad, my mom, and then ultimately talk with my coaches. And then once I got that all hashed out, figured out what I wanted to do, I, me and my family felt like it was best to come back for another year. What were some of the main factors? I mean, you know, besides just, you know, potentially where you thought of yourself as far as the draft prospects. I mean, what, what were some of the other factors you really, that really kind of went into that decision? Um, besides all the, the draft stuff and everything, the only, the really only factor was, you know, playing this season with my brothers, playing the season with guys like Patrick. Like Patrick was one of the main people I was talking to when I had the option to come back. He was the first person really the first person on the team that I talked to about it. He was the first person to text me like, yo, come back. Like, it, and it was no question. We, we might've talked twice and, and that's all it took for the decision to be made because he was making that decision. A few other people was making that decision, Paris, Jalen, you know? So once I seen everybody I was already on board and I seen the potential of what we could be and how I know we are going to be this season, it was, it was a no brainer. It was a no brainer. With you in Paris, you know, safety, uh, you know, starters, local guys, Western PA guys, I know you're out in the community a lot and you, you talk to high school kids and that kind of thing. Do you see them sort of, do you see it making an impression on them? The, the, you know, two guys from the city kind of playing a pretty prominent role in, you know, in Pitt's defense. I mean, do you see it? I don't know. What, what kind of impact do you see that having on local kids, particularly like high school, like recruits and stuff? Man, I would say a huge impact, you know, and I say this in the most humbly way. Um, th but they, guys like that, they pay attention to everything we do because right now we're in the shoes that, that, that they want to be in. So, you know, we know that they pay attention to everything that we do, just how when we were in that position, we paid attention to everything that the guys in front of us were doing, like James Conner, Tyler Boyd, Aaron Donald, Whitehead, like guys like that. So, you know, just – it's like as you as you go up and you level up, you know, you just know the people coming underneath you, they're they're looking at you for everything. Damar, what what do, what do you think uh, Paris would have said to you if you told him you weren't coming back? <laughs> uh I don't know. I don't know for real. Um you know, we all got our own decisions to make, so and we're all our own people. So, you know, he would have he would have had my back regardless of what decision I would have made, but he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have took it lightly for sure. You know, we wanted that. We wanted another year playing together. This one's for both of you guys, and sorry if you've already answered this, but have there been a lot of challenges with kind of adapting to this new way of things? And how have you guys kind of found yourselves adapting here? Uh yeah, I mean, of course, like anything, when there's something that happens like this, is challenging. During the summertime, we try to find out how to just keep grinding. And just keep pushing through. And like Coach Bates say every day, we go by AIO, adapt, overcome, and improvise. So that's just our daily slogan. That's just how we keep going. Yeah, and for me, you know, it's just been fun. It's been fun because everything's been new. It's been a new process. You know, this is like I've been in a camp here for a little while now. And, you know, it's it's a different it's everything is different. So it's just the new cycle of everything. It's it's been fun and I've just been Loving the adaptation we've been doing lately.
Chris never started a game at Pitt. And fast forward a year to now, he's on like preseason All American lists and all these things. As a friend, as a teammate, what's it been like to kind of watch that one year of growth from him? Um, it's, I'm just, I'm just, I'm blessed to be a part of it. You know, I'm, I'm blessed to be a part of it. Uh, I knew his talent from high school. You know, I, I knew he's a, a special player. He makes plays happen that you know not everyone can do. And even before last season started. We would just watch film, just watching film leading up to the to the season. I would always tell him like, "Bro, you're gonna be an All American after this season." Like I seen it. I I seen the plays that he can make, just off of you know just watching film and then me knowing him as a person and as a player. I knew what impact he would have on our defense. So, if anybody called it, I definitely did. Patrick, you come in as a pretty established starter, it would seem, but yet. You got Haba, there's Deslin, obviously there's Rashad on the other side. What does that competition do for you? And, and was that big for you to make sure you still have that to keep you sharp every day, if you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, just having, just knowing that I got hungry dudes behind me just make me want to craft every day. It makes me feel like me in my head, I think like I got to take every rep like, like I'm not the starter. And I had that mentality because – I ain't start for three years. This is my first year starting last year. So I just got that mentality naturally. Like, everything I want to do, I got to go get it and I got to go take it. So I, I feel like I'm in competition all the time. Any additional questions for DeMar or Patrick? Damar, uh, you got you guys are among the returning secondary guys are coming back. You guys got a tight group, of course. A lot of seniors. You got thirty eight pass breakups and seven interceptions between the group of you guys. What's the confidence and the trust you guys have in each other as far as the chemistry and any like just communication on the back end, like the advantages you think you guys are going to have with that chemistry? Um, I feel like it's a big advantage. You know, we have a a veteran group, and us as safeties, we have an unbelievable chemistry. You know, even off the field that leads onto the field. But the chemistry between us safeties with the corners as well, it's just, it's guys that we've been working with even behind the scenes when they weren't playing as much as they were last year or as much as they will this year. It's just guys we've been working with for years and now it's just like everything is coming to fruition. So, you know, just having that, that like leadership throughout everybody in the back end and like just that maturity of everyone it's just like, it's, it's going to be fun to watch and be a part of. Anything else? Mar and Patrick, thank you so much for your time today. Well done. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you.